I studied him quite a bit. Um, you know, he's the best, one of the best ever, and, and is playing at a very high level again this year. So he's been a great guy to learn from and uh, crossed paths only a couple of times, one being the Pro Bowl a couple of years ago, and that was a great opportunity for me to uh, just watch and learn. And, uh, um, you know, no surprise how much success he's having again this year, and um, you know, it'll be a great challenge for us. What does it mean to have Everson back in this position? It's outstanding to see him back here. Uh, you know, I think our focus is on Everson, the person. Obviously, he's a great football player, but uh, having Everson, the person, back in the locker room is a is a great thing to to see. What do you appreciate most about your game and what you've seen from him over the years? Well, you know, when you're as good as he is, there's not one thing. I mean, if there's one thing he wouldn't be the Hall of Famer. He is. I mean, it's he doesn't take sacks. He protects the football. He throws for a lot of yards, a lot of touchdowns. He's good on third down. He stayed healthy. He's had durability. I mean, that's why he's Drew Brees. It's not one thing. You know, that's so the whole point of him being Drew is that you can't you can't name just one thing. When you go into a game like this with a resurgent quarterback that has been describing it around as long as he has and as successful as he has been, is there a, a temptation to go in thinking, boy, we're going to have to come out passing and try to keep up with them? There's an awareness that when you play against a good offense, you can't beat yourselves. You can't give them the ball back right away. But it's not like you go into games um, against a less explosive offense and suddenly you know, change your approach a whole lot. I think that what we emphasize when we're playing a team um, with a younger quarterback is let's not gift them anything. Let's not create turnovers. Let's not give them a, 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 you know, an advantage from that standpoint. Let's make them drive the length of the field. But uh, I think you could say the exact same thing for a really good offense. So I, I think it's really the same approach. We've got to play good, smart, sound football. And it really is going to be that way no matter who you're playing. I think accuracy is is a very important trait, maybe the most important as an NFL quarterback, and uh, he's certainly one of the best. Um, what goes into it, you know, I, I think it's a trait that you either have or you don't in a lot of ways. I think when you're consistent with your feet, when you're consistent with your eyes and your reads and you're under control and you have uh, trust in the protection, all those things lend itself to helping you be more accurate, but ultimately, um, you know, it's a skill that uh, is, is hard to teach, hard to develop, hard to coach. But uh, if you have it, it's certainly something you can rely on. Why do you think it's so difficult for a defense to operate for an offense like this? Do you agree with those with such a huge amount? Well, I think we're always going to focus on the players who didn't go as high. You know, there's been a lot of talk made of Tom Brady and where he was drafted, but. Um, there's also been a lot of guys picked in the first round who have turned out to be very good. And there's been a lot of guys who haven't been picked in the first round who haven't turned out to be very good. So I, I would say that the evaluation process still, while it's humans judging humans and it's imperfect, uh, I'm sure the success rate is, is probably better than, than most people think. But it is such a team game. And so when you have great protection, receivers getting open, great play design, great coaching, uh, your quarterback's going to play better naturally. And, and when you have a great quarterback who doesn't have the protection, doesn't have the separation from his receivers, you know, the play calling is average, then he's going to struggle no matter how good he is, I think. So um, it is the ultimate team game. And I think that also can affect quarterback play quite a bit and make it hard to evaluate or say, we've, we've got a quarterback and he's going to play at a high level no matter what. I think those moving parts around him can at times affect performance. Uh, hasn't shown up yet. You know, it's certainly early in the week, but uh, hasn't hasn't shown up yet. Chris, you guys have a lot of long touchdowns in the passing game. Um, but you don't have a ton from the defense on the ground. Does, does that matter? I mean, is it matter if you're scoring long touchdowns or you just you need to get a little long? Or? I think what matters is getting touchdowns in the red zone instead of field goals. When you work so hard to get down into the red zone and you're knocking on the door, you want to make sure you come away with it with seven points rather than three. And uh, um, I think that's the emphasis, and, and you know, if you're if you're not doing that, it's going to be hard to win games consistently. And I, I think there was a drive against the Jets where we probably had three to four really good opportunities to score a touchdown in the first half, and ended up having to kick a field goal. And I think that was one that I felt we let get away, and uh, was a frustrating sequence for me. You know, looking at my own play, that where I need to be better um, because of just that exact fact. Yeah. 
Well, I was watching, you know, at home in Atlanta, just like everybody else. And, uh, you know, it was improbable. I couldn't believe it happened. Um, you know, I think it, it was a, uh, you know, a bit of a, a moment to a, a, a greater story, you know, a greater season that you could summarize in a lot of ways in that moment. And um, I think, you know, the, then the moments that followed it in terms of the atmosphere in the stadium and, and the dynamic there, you know, people didn't want to leave. I think that was also a, the kind of experience that as players, as fans, is, is what it's all about. So it's a, uh, a play that will live in, in the history of the Vikings and really in the history of Minnesota sports for, forever, and uh, uh, rightfully so. Well, when you look at, you know, the catch he made on the on our sideline against the Eagles uh, early in the game off play action, I mean, that was a diving catch that uh, it's hard to reel in when you look at the third and 13 against the Cardinals on our sideline uh, that he brought in, you know, not an easy catch. Um, and I can go on and on with some others that he's made as well, um, you know, where for whatever reason, the ball wasn't right on his face mask and, and uh, you know, he brings it in. And that's certainly one of the traits that, you know, Give you all the production that you see, and and uh, make him a, a very very good receiver in this league. Kirk, how much do you study opposing quarterbacks and the ability to get too much? Uh, I study him. I do. That's a very important part of, of this uh, playing in this league. Understanding your opponent, understand the personnel. Uh, I think highly of them. You know, Marshawn Lattimore was as good a corner uh, as I played last year uh, in our schedule that I played, and. Um, you know, I also thought a lot of Crowley and, and I think a lot of Eli Apple and, um, you know, Williams as well. So I, I just think there's some good players out there that uh, are going to give us a, a handful. What about when they trade for a guy like Apple on Tuesday? How does that like, impact your process of the workload of them? Uh, you factor it in. You factor it in and you uh, gather all the information you can. And, and um, there's certain things you won't know, but you try to gather the information that you can know and then uh, react on Sunday to anything that changes. Well, ultimately, it's all about winning. Um, we've won the last three games, which is you know a good thing. Um, you know, I think Latavius has done a nice job running the football the last couple of weeks. And uh, really, when you look to the end of the Eagles game as well, when we had to run the ball to, to kind of turn the clock, I thought he did a great job of that then too. Um, I think our two young running backs, Mike and Rock, have done a really good job running the football as well and having some explosive runs mixed in there. So, um, you know, unfortunately, injuries are a part of this game. and. Uh, as we talked about in training camp, you can look at the roster and try to project things, but uh, injuries can change uh, what you're actually working with very quickly. And uh, that certainly you know, happened a little bit with not having Dalvin in there, but uh, hopefully we can get him back and, and then uh, get him back to his old self. Do you think you could be successful throwing the ball one-on-one? -on -one? I don't know that I had a lot of expectations. I think I kept an open mind, and I just try to run the plays that are called, and I don't try to map out um, how things are going to play out. I just try to you know, take it one day at a time and just learn in April and the installs and in OTAs and just try to piece it together. And um, I think every game calls for a different uh, approach as well. You know, the Arizona game with the lead we had early and the way our defense was playing, it just didn't call for uh, trying to open it up and attack down the field. It was more about trying to run the clock, trying to run the football and uh, get out of there with a win. And I think uh, each week will probably dictate, you know, how the game flows will dictate, um, you know, the plan of attack in terms of play calling and strategy. With this game, they go up a notch in terms of adjusting to it's the opponent setting. Um, is it tricky? Do you think it's going to have another level? Well, I don't know of a game that hasn't had another level I've ever played in this league. I think it'll be a very dynamic environment with our fan base at home, Sunday night football, playing against a very good football team. Anytime you play an NFC team, you feel the importance for the playoff chase. Uh, uh, you know, to get a win. Um, so there's all those factors contributing, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I think there'll be juice. I, I, I'd, I'd hate to admit if there ever wasn't juice for, for a game, you know, I think we got to be juice no matter what the situation. Last couple for Kirk. It seems like coaches are using a two point conversion a little more this year um, in some really unique situations. How often do you guys work on those plays specifically? 
Uh, you have them ready. You have them prepped. We've carried a few on our menu every single week so that we're ready for, for when it uh, is needed. And then it just comes down to the situations in the game that may or may not dictate them and the strategy we want to we want to employ. But uh, uh, it's a big part of the game. And um, these games are so close that the nature of, you know, being ready with two-point conversions and knowing they may come up and then the importance of the play itself working, um, you know, it's it's a big deal. When you look back and looked at the game with the Jets, what were they able to do on third and longs especially that uh, gave you trouble and you improved on this week? Well, I think you start with the fact that they got us in third and long. Anytime you have, uh, I believe it was eight third and 11 pluses and then four more that were third and seven to 10, you have 12 plays that really aren't, third and medium or less, I think that's the starting point. So they were effective on first and second down to make third down very difficult. And then um, from there, you know, I think they did a good job of doubling some receivers and just taking away the concepts that we had. And I think that's where it started. All right. Yeah.